Greetings and shalom. This is Adrian Scott, and welcome to Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. So, yeah, I wanted to get this little update posted. Um, we did make it back to Canada, so we're safe to back at home. I'm currently at my friend's place there. But I'll be heading back to my house a little later today. Just having got here, we spent... We worked it out to be right in the area of about 22 hours on airplanes through how many time zones, I'm I'm not even sure, but yeah, so obviously you have that whole jet lag thing. You hear about it. Well, this is the first time I'm actually experiencing it, but uh, we are home. I'll be making my way back to my house a little later, and uh, I wanted to just post a little update talking about our trip and also, you know, some of what's been happening, obviously, where we just came from in Israel. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty dark, dark time right now. And I would say that both for Israel and for um, some of the civilians in the, the Gaza Strip. I would really pray and I, I ask everyone else just to keep your prayers and well wishes out for all of the civilians that are caught up in this. I do have to say, and I, I, I will keep this to just saying that this is my opinion, that uh, well, what is I think pretty clearly can be stated as a fact is that um, oh, traffic that this organization is a terrorist organization there there's nothing military about this they they may wear the clothing but uh, that's what this is and it's been identified by any number of countries including the EU I believe um, so let's start with that and I would just say that None of this devastation, none of this suffering would be happening right now had they not attacked initially. Because they did initiate the attack. Israel is responding. But none of this would be happening if they hadn't launched this surprise attack and targeted civilians. Men, women, children, the elderly, the disabled. They, they're not discriminating. Above and beyond that, this could end right now. Um, the IDF, the Israeli army, have basically said, and I believe them, I believe them, that uh, if Hamas were right now to unconditionally surrender and turn over whatever terrorists that they, or not terrorists, whatever hostages that they have, that this suffering would stop. The devastation would, would stop. I'll leave it at that. I did want to take a moment just to point out that, you know, not all of this trip was a negative. We did get to spend most of our two weeks there actually thoroughly enjoying ourselves and just walking through this. Every every step you take in every place is, is history. History on top of history on top of history. And uh, I did get an enormous amount of pictures and videos and I am going to be releasing some stuff. But it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge because I'll tell you, we, we absolutely were safe physically where we were at. We never had any fear for our safety. We still took precautions. But uh, yeah, that's not one thing we were worried about. We were always more concerned about what was happening to the people in those affected areas. But despite the fact that we were in a pretty good location, it, uh, it's still something when I've seen some of the images and some of the videos and stuff, which oh, I kind of wish I didn't see. But at the same time, I think it has to be out there. They're already in their PR mode, you know, denying that, that any of this brutality has happened. But it wasn't all bad. 
it is going to weigh on me. And that, that actually was the point I was trying to make is it is something that's sitting pretty heavy on my heart. I hope it can resolve sooner rather than later. But videos will be coming. Um, you know, I'll probably have the other occasional update here or there. I'm going to, I'm looking forward to probably a pretty emotional reunion with my wife. I know she's been a worried wreck. She's done a pretty good job of holding it together, but I know that it was weighing on her too, as well as the rest of, I mean, both of us. Um, my friend and I, you know, our family and friends, they, they were concerned. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I'll say too much more than that. There's a lot of stuff I could probably politically get in trouble for. I definitely have my opinions. But, um, needless to say, again, I'll, I'll just say again that I hope this can wrap up and conclude and that gentleman needs to fix his car. <laughs> Oh, I don't know how bad that's coming through on the mic, but uh, he needs to get that repaired. <laughs> oh, on that note, I am here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Again, just getting ready to head back to my home on the, on the island, but uh, I will have more stuff coming, and uh, it's going to take me a while. To, I have got a lot of pictures and videos. It's going to take me a while to edit through stuff and put it together in some semblance of um, structure. And there might be a couple of little surprises in there too. But I will let you go for now. I wish everyone out there a good day and a good week. Just pray blessings on all of you. I would ask, please, that you just keep both the civilians in Gaza and the civilians in Israel and everyone, the people defending the IDF, all those people, that we just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And that there would be found a way to have this situation resolve again sooner rather than later with the least amount of human tragedy as possible because in the end it is about the people it's the people in this so blessings to you all and i will talk to you soon shalom bye for now